progressive era in the United States, which spanned the late 19th century and the first two decades of the 20th, spurred dramatic changes, including major social reforms. Muckrakers, a term coined by Theodore Roosevelt in 1906, referring to writers and investigative journalists who exposed corruption in American industries and corporations, revealed a number of social ills to the American public. For example, Ida Tarbell's expose of Standard Oil and Crystal Eastman's book, Work Accidents in the Law, opened many eyes to rampant unethical business practices, industry's lack of safety measures, and the suffering experienced by workers' families. Muckraking went far beyond journalism, however. For instance, Upton Sinclair's 1906 novel, The Jungle, exposed the terrible working conditions in Chicago's slaughterhouses. Sinclair originally went undercover in the stockyards to investigate working conditions as a journalist, but wrote a novel instead as a testament to the terrible treatment of immigrant workers in the meat industry. Sinclair's book also revealed that processed meats were unsafe to consume, and the public outcry led to the passage of food inspection laws, rather than major improvements in working conditions. As Sinclair put it, I aimed at the public's heart, and by accident, I hit it in the stomach. Another muckraker, Jacob Reese, documented his investigations through photography. His 1890 book, How the Other Half Lives, visually portrayed the squalid living conditions of unskilled, mostly immigrant laborers in New York's tenement slums. The descriptions so horrified the public that they pushed the state of New York to legislate better living conditions in worker housing. In the first decades of the 20th century, European immigrants made up a significant percentage of the American workforce. Possessing limited English skills, they often found that misunderstanding directions could be life-threatening. And rather than clarifying their instructions, supervisors taunted immigrant workers with racial slurs. Women also played a prominent role in the progressive era. Social workers such as Jane Addams and Ellen Gates Starr opened Hull House. Hull House, a settlement house in Chicago, provided immigrants with shelter, food, job assistance, and education. Hull House began its life as a kindergarten, but expanded its services every year, even starting classes to educate adults on their civil rights and civic duties. Reform activists who opened similar settlement houses worked alongside Adams and Starr to fight for child labor laws and were instrumental in starting services for juveniles. The adult education movement also began in settlement houses. Women were also at the leading edge of the movement to prohibit alcohol in the United States. Formed in 1874, the Women's Christian Temperance Union, WCTU, sought to abolish alcohol as part of a larger fight for women's civil rights and the safety of children. At its first convention in November 1874, the WCTU focused its attention on stopping alcohol from destroying families and causing other social problems such as prostitution. Women, such as Kansan, Carrie Nation, started women's crusades to get saloons to close. Nation marched into saloons, singing and praying while wielding a hatchet to destroy bottles and bar fixtures. Hatchets aside, the WCTU supported many progressive era reforms, such as women's suffrage, shelters for abused women and children, and equal pay for equal work. The WCTU's efforts along with those of groups like Ohio's politically sophisticated Anti-Saloon League, resulted in the passage of the 18th Amendment, prohibiting the production, sale, and consumption of alcoholic beverages. 